Amen. Welcome to Bible Baptist Church tonight. Let's all stand. Take your hymnals, number 341. So let's all stand and take your hymnals. Number 341, Victory in Jesus. We'll sing all three verses. Number 341. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cry, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me. With his redeeming blood, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory! Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. All right, let's remain standing for just a moment. We'll have a word of prayer. Brother Freddie, y'all can come on up and get ready. And um, Miss Kim Birchfield texted me and asked if we would pray for Tanner. Tanner Birchfield, Tanner tested positive. And so we want to lift him up. And, and uh, then Miss Crystal Gilkey's dad, uh, Brother Bill, uh, has, is in the hospital. And, of course, it's, you know, when... You're in the hospital, your family can't be with you and all that, so it's real hard on her mom to leave him there and all of that. So please pray for, for Brother Bill. And my grandson Dylan had his four wisdom teeth cut out yesterday. And also Brendan Gaffney had his cut out, which is Miss uh, Lisa Owen's grandson, Brennan. And they both had four wisdom teeth cut out yesterday. So I went by and saw Dylan a minute ago, and, you know, he's still got the packing in and all that. But he's getting better. It's just taking a little time, and you know how that goes. So he's kind of laying low and trying to get better. So we can head back to Bible college. And then we mentioned Dr. Ray, Renee Ferret with Beam's Bible Ministry having an eye infection. He had eye surgery, but then he got an infection in his eye. And uh, so pray for Dr. Ferret. We certainly love him, and he's a real blessing here at our church every year on Bible Day, the first Sunday in January. And, um, and then we mentioned my son Jake, and Jake is in Gulfport, Mississippi, at uh, Brother Stephen Crane's church uh, presenting tonight, the burden of his heart to start that church in Lafayette, Louisiana. They're in a missions conference there. So... 
just lift up Jake and, and all of that. And I know there are others that are sick tonight and uh, want to be mindful just to pray one for another, okay? And, and uh, we're glad you're here. And it's been a blessing this week. It's been a real blessing. And uh, God really felt like the Lord's been speaking to my heart, just message after message. Today we had chapel in our Christian school. We've got, like, I think I counted 41 on the list today. And, and uh, plus we've got homeschoolers, uh, you know, that are coming in and for chapel and so forth. And that's a blessing. And we're just glad to have all the students. And the chapel today was really, really powerful. And, and uh, we thank the Lord for Dallas just being able to be here with us. He's going to preach one more Abbreviate the chapel in the morning right out of the gate at 8 o'clock, and then he'll be on his way by no later than 8.30. He's got to be in Little Rock by 10.30 because his plane leaves about noontime. We don't want him to miss his plane. Lord knows we don't want him to miss his plane. Somebody say amen right there. We've got to get him out of Dodge. Amen. So uh, thank you for the love offering this week. It's been a real blessing to him and Brother Freddie's family. And uh, God's really shown himself strong and, and uh, on both of their behalves. Amen. That's been a real blessing. So we thank the Lord. For that and um, so let's bow our heads we'll pray and ask the Lord to bless tonight father we sure do love you tonight and Lord we lift up these requests to you tonight Lord I pray for brother Bill there Lord in Texas and Lord I know Miss Crystal loves loves him a lot Lord and, and their family and their mom and I just pray Lord you touch his body and help him I pray for Tanner Birchfield tonight Lord we love Tanner and I just pray that he'd be able to get back to work soon Lord and be able to get get a, a negative test and, and Lord uh, please help him Lord and bless him and Lord, uh, uh, be with uh, uh, Dylan and Brendan, Lord, and getting their wisdom teeth cut out. And I just pray you'd uh, just touch their bodies, Lord, and help them, the healing there required, Lord. And, and I just pray you'd just touch them and make them better, dear Lord, so they can get back up and do the things that they enjoy doing. And, Lord, I know there's a lot of other people that are sick and, Lord, have needs. I know Brother Billy Kirsch got his back surgery coming up and then kind of hit a little snag with his heart, Lord, and got to have a heart cath before he can have uh, the surgery done now. And so... I pray for him. I lift him up to you tonight, Lord. And God, just bless uh, all of our missionaries tonight in the distant lands. And Brother Ferret, Lord, in the Beams Bible Ministry, Lord, I know they haven't been able to ship Bibles out for a while now. And I pray you'd open up uh, the borders in other countries where, where the Bibles can get through, Lord. The Word of God could be, uh, be spread abroad there. And Lord, we pray you'd make a way for all of that. And Lord, thank you, Brother Dallas, being here this week. He's sure been a blessing to me and, Lord, to our church. And I pray you just bless him and Nikita and their ministry, Lord. And I pray you'd empower him, give him health and strength and grace and all that's needed, dear Lord. And bless Miss Nikita back home as she cooks for the Bible college there and all those young ladies helping her. And, Lord, give her what's needed, uh, Lord, this semester. And just keep us all in your wonderful care. Bless Brother Freddie and his family. They've uh, been used by you this week, Lord, to speak to our hearts in song. And so just bless our service tonight. Bless the chapel in the morning. We'll thank you and love you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Welcome to Bible Baptist. Now we're going to let Brother Freddie and his family sing two songs, and then Brother Dallas is going to come and bring the final closeout message for the church tonight. Okay, that'll be a real blessing. God bless you. All right. Amen. First Thessalonians 4. Go ahead, kids. First Thessalonians 4, 13, 13. For I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not. Even as other which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we send to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, direct the charge. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the earth. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen, amen. Let's sing that song, uh, We Give It All to the Lord, Kids. Go ahead. Little Abby, I think you lead off on this. She didn't have very much to give, nothing that you would recall. A widow without very much to give, only two mites, that's all. But a story came down through the ages how she gave more than she could afford. She didn't have very much to give, but she gave it all to the Lord. Some give up their abundance, some sacrificially. We must give with the heart of thanks for the blessings we receive. 
we cast our bread upon the waters. Watch our blessings come ashore. We may not have very much to give, but we give it all to the Lord. He didn't have very much to give, only two fish and some bread. He didn't have very much to give, but with this so many were fed. Jesus took what was offered and then he made a miracle as his reward. He didn't have very much to give, but he gave it all to the Lord. Some give up their abundance, some sacrificially. We must give with the heart of thanks for the blessings we receive. We cast our bread upon the waters, watch our blessings come ashore. We may not have very much to give, but we give it all to the Lord. We may not have reading something the other day about when the CV-19 thing first broke out, everybody was making a raid to go to the stores. Y'all remember when they were all trying to get toilet paper, and you couldn't get toilet paper anywhere you went. And this guy, he, he, he came home, and his wife, had, she told her to get some toilet paper, make sure you got plenty, and she did. And instead of getting 48 rolls, the, the big truck brought in 48 boxes of toilet paper, and it was like $3,600 on his car. That killed him. And I wanted to tell y'all thank you. Well, that'd be a nightmare. I want to tell y'all thank you for giving to us this week the way you did. There's no way we could sing or if we ever preached or anything the way y'all took care of us. Y'all been so kind. More than when our septic tank blew out, the next day it was fixed. And we took, the Lord took care of it, and may, way more than that. And like Brother said, uh, we got more than a couple rolls of toilet paper after that, too. And, uh, but listen to this song called The Last Blood, and, and, and let God speak to your heart. It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ that we're saved, and we can have services like this. And I appreciate the preacher that's been here visiting this week. I know he's got to head out early tomorrow and get to the next meeting. They say when they, we came, we just wanted to get preached at. And boy, he more than accommodated us in that department. They either blessed you or they blissed you. We had a lot of blistering this week, amen, brother. But we got a blessing too. And thank you for, for making it plain, straight, and preaching from your heart. And, um, hey, Freddie, yeah. the, the piano, that's the. the just the, hit, can you hit a first note? Well, we'll just do that. There's no sustain pedal. I can when, this when man sinned in the garden, that sin Jehovah. Let's start a little lower. Okay. When, is that it? Okay. When man sinned in the garden, that sin Jehovah could not condone. And the blood shed of animals could not forever our sin atone. But, but the Son had compassion. He said, Father, I'll be your lamb. So once again, blood was shed. As the soldiers nailed his hands. It's been three days since heaven. Can you help me, Freddie? I'm sorry. It's been, it's been three days since heaven. heaven. Watch the prince of glory die. His followers are in mourning. For in that 
tomb their Savior lies. But at the grave something is happening as their streams I've lost my hope. Angels rise in anticipation for the tonight and again appreciate the opportunity and the privilege and boys uh, I've had a good time of fellowship with Brother Weedo and uh, just everybody this week appreciate being able to spend some time some extra time with Brother Matt and I guarantee you this uh, you spend time with Brother Matt or Brother Weedo you're going to eat good amen and so uh, Brother Matt's been making some home cooked meals I think we've been eating them about midnight every night but anyway I, uh, uh, he, he, he fixed me a steak last night, Brother Bob, about as big as this pulpit right here, amen. I wish Miss Debbie would have invited me to go to Planet Fitness with them, but uh, uh, I joined a gym last year, and uh, so far I've lost $180, amen, so uh, uh, that's where I'm at there. So, uh, uh, hey, uh, is Dylan watching, um, is he watching tonight? He is? All right, I got something for Dylan. Let me get on, let me get here. Dylan's dating a young lady. I'm looking forward uh, to meeting her. But uh, uh, I'm on this um, group text, and a couple of the college kids are on this group text. And so the title of this group text was called uh, Quarantine Pickup Lines. Quarantine Pickup Lines. So this is for Dylan. Dylan, you can tell your young lady next time you see her. I wouldn't want no virus to take me out, but I wouldn't mind if you did. Amen? Here's one. Now, you're a snack I could stock up on. I might not. Amen. Uh, here's number three. <laughs> I'm trying to boost my immune system, and I could sure use some vitamin U. Number four. Are you a virus because you take my breath away? Number five, virus may get my nose running for a week, but you're going to be running through my mind a lot longer than that. And number six, um, you cannot spell quarantine without you are a QT, amen? So that's uh, quarantine pickup lines for Dylan there, amen? All right, let's get to spiritual things now. Isaiah chapter number 41, Isaiah chapter number 41. Brother Weedo, thank you again for allowing me to be able to be here this week. And uh, definitely it's been a great blessing. And uh, I owe a great debt uh, to this place. And I sure am thankful uh, that you believed in a young preacher uh, 13 years ago when you took a chance with me. You never... Uh, you, you didn't know who I was, but you allowed me to be able to come, and I sure do uh, appreciate that. Nikita and I 
uh, are forever grateful for Brother Miss Sweeto and this church here. So uh, thank you tonight. I, I, I want to preach a message of help to us tonight. I really do. Uh, why don't we stand tonight as we take reverence to the reading of the Word of God in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse number 10. And I've given you a few stories this week uh, uh, about um, the early days of uh, the pandemic that has hit our country. And it's really hard to believe, but uh, I've been back traveling now for about 17 weeks, and it doesn't seem like that long at all. Uh, I'm very, very grateful to be traveling again. But uh, I want to give you a message, the very first message that the Lord gave me uh, uh, when, when everything took place. And if you'll allow me just to give you a testimony, just give you uh, just um, uh, a backdrop from where this message came from. And uh, you understand our country is going through a storm and uh, we're going through the storm with the country. But when this storm is over, the question is not will we go through the storms of life. That's not the question. The question is, what will we do when we do face the storms of life? Because I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news because other storms will come. But I'm glad that we can trust in God even through the storms of life. Amen. Isaiah chapter 41, look at verse number 10 with me tonight. Isaiah in chapter number 41. And let's look at verse number 10. The Bible says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And Brother Bob, would you open us up in prayer tonight, please, sir? Yes. Dear God, we ask you. You may be seated tonight. It's good. I don't want to embarrass him, but it's good to see Brother Gavin here tonight. Amen. I can definitely call him brother. Amen. Because we're in the family of God. Amen. And I'm glad that Brother Bob took a Bible last night and showed him the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Gavin, whether you knew it or not, or whether you really accept it or not, we're, you're, me and you're in the same family. Amen. So I'll give you my address at the end of the service, and I'm expecting a Christmas gift. Amen. Uh, I love those Christmas gifts. No, I'm just kidding. And good to see you in church tonight. And I promise you, you live for God and you'll never regret a day of it. I promise you that. Amen. I, I, I'm sure it's safe to say tonight that there's some under the sound of my voice that uh, before uh, coronavirus 2020 uh, hit America, uh, perhaps there's some of us that are in this room uh, that you may have been on the mountaintop, maybe uh, spiritually, maybe physically, uh, maybe just everything was just clicking along okay. The cars or the tires on the vehicle were good. There was money in the bank to pay the bills. The kids were behaving and everything was just going uh, dandy for you uh, before the pandemic hit our country. And I, I could certainly say that. Matter of fact, before it really got uh, serious and in, in my mind and in my heart, uh, we had just finished up a very large uh, youth meeting there in Lexington, Kentucky. I believe 1,100 uh, young people and their youth pastors were there in Lexington. And, and, and the Lord allowed me to be just a, a small part in being able to preach in that uh, particular youth meeting. And boy, we uh, saw altars filled and uh, young people getting right and uh, young men getting saved and uh, uh, or, or young people getting saved, young men surrendering to preach. And, uh, and, and as soon as that youth meeting was over, I hopped on a plane 
And I'd heard that term uh, that I'm not even going to say again tonight. I'd heard that term uh, before that particular time. But when I got on that plane and I flew to North Carolina, and I can't remember if it was in Raleigh or Charlotte that I landed, uh, but I was preaching in Roanoke Springs, North Carolina that week, and I was going to preach for a pastor by the name of Brother Tondi, and I did preach for uh, Brother Tondi. I, I never met him before. Uh, somebody had given my name, and he called, and uh, we put the meeting on the calendar, and I didn't know what he looked like, but I, I sure hope he knew what I looked like. So he, uh, I was standing there on the corner there after I got my bags at the airport, and he came by the curb there, and he picked me up. And for the next two hours, uh, he began to tell me the seriousness of that term that I'm not going to use again tonight. He began to tell me about the businesses shutting down in his town because of the seriousness of it. Uh, he began to tell me about restaurants that were shutting down in his town, and that's when it began to become very serious to me when he began to tell me about the restaurants shutting down. And he said, Brother Dallas, he said, I'm afraid that we're not even going to be able to finish the revival uh, this week, he said, because they're putting mandates in telling us that we may have to shut the church down because of its seriousness. And fear began to grip my soul, and, but we, did be, we, were, we were able to finish uh, that revival. And, uh, but fear began to grip my soul because it just began to become very serious in, in my mind and in my heart. And I even began to call my airline that I flew to North Carolina on and began to try to find an earlier flight and uh, trying to just figure everything out, and trying to get back home and all those things. And I, I remember I called Nikita on the phone and I began to uh, tell her what my plans were and tell her that I was looking for an earlier flight home and uh, just telling Brother Tondi that uh, maybe we'll do the revival some other time. And, and she said, Chris, and here I am, I'm panicking on the other end of the phone and here she is on the other end in Lexington. She's just cool and collective. And she said, well, Chris, don't you think the people that you're preaching to, don't you think they're a little bit fearful? She said, well, won't you just grab your Bible like you always have and just try to help those folks from the Word of God like you always have? And I hung up the phone with Nikita, and uh, I, I talked to Brother Bobo uh, right after I talked to her. And uh, Brother Bobo and I began to talk, and we began to spend time uh, talking about our concerns with one another and uh, we spent time sharing scripture with each other and uh, began to pray with one another and uh, he, he reminded me that God uh, told us in the word of God that God's children are, are not to be dismayed. He said, Brother Dallas, he said, you know what that word dismayed means? I said, no, I, I really don't know what the word dismayed means. He says, well, it means panic. And he said, Brother Dallas, he said, God doesn't want his children to panic. And no matter what's going on in America, no matter what's going on in the world, he said, God's still on the throne. And we prayed together and how my heart was just a little bit comforted after we prayed. But still, Brother Reed, fear was gripping my soul because uh, I was hearing the talk from, uh, uh, no, no, they didn't mean anything bad about it, but I, I would hear the statement that uh, the evangelists and the missionaries, as far as ministry was going, uh, concerned, uh, were going to have the hardest time uh, with all of this going on. And I, and I remember after I got off the phone with Brother Bobo, I was, sitting in a, I, I was sitting in a chair there in my motel room and I had it backed up to the window there and there was a big king-sized bed inside that room. And uh, I, 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 I've never been much of a news watcher, but that week I was watching a lot of the news. And after I hung up the phone with Brother Bobo, I, I kept on hearing this statement over and over again for about the next hour. They would come back about every 15 minutes, Brother Bob, and they would make this statement. America is going to come back bigger and better than she ever was. But never one time did they ever use God in that statement. And I listened to that news station, Miss Peggy, for about an hour. And then I looked across that big old king-size bed there. And on the other side of that king-size bed was an end table there. Not this Bible, but another Bible that I've got in my room, a reading Bible that I carry, was sitting there on that end table and it was just shut like that and how God began to convict my heart that I was more concerned about what the news reporters had to say than I was even what God had to say. 
And I'm not against you if you watch the news. I think you'd be better off if you wouldn't watch as much news as some people do. But can I say from that day to this day, I haven't watched one second of the news, but I guarantee you this, I've spent a lot of time in that Bible right there, amen, and I've spent a lot of time on my knees, and I can promise you tonight, as God is my witness, tonight I stand before you, and I'm not driven by fear, but thank God I'm living by faith, amen. And child of God, can I tell you, uh, my friend, that's what God uh, desires for you and I. He doesn't want us to live in fear about what's going on around us. And I'm glad uh, in a crumbling world all around us, I've got a sure foundation called the Word of God where I can live by faith. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter number 41 once again. I want you to look at the verse again with me tonight. And I, I want to preach this message for you real quick. Isaiah chapter 41, look at verse number 10. The Bible says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You'll find as a Bible student that the book of Isaiah is a mini Bible in its structure. For instance, the book of Isaiah consists of 66 books divided into two parts, just like my Bible and your Bible is divided into two parts. You'll find there's 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the, in the New Testament. In Isaiah, the first 39 chapters, it deals with God's people during and in their captivity. And the last 27 chapters of Isaiah, it deals with God's children after their captivity. And so the book of Isaiah is a mini Bible in its structure. And you'll find tonight is the verse that I read. Our, our text is in the second half of Isaiah. And Isaiah is giving us a message uh, not only to convict the Babylonians, but also to comfort the Israelites. And I, I want to focus tonight on that comforting aspect uh, this, this evening. I, I I want you to notice the language. Uh, God is speaking directly to his people through Isaiah. And, and this verse is a very positive verse. And it's a very encouraging verse. You understand, uh, uh, church, uh, these people were captives. They were prisoners in the land of Babylon. But they found themselves because of their disobedience to God. But you understand, God never forgot about his children. Matter of fact, God had prophets that preached and prophesied concerning getting right and what was to come come to them if they did get right. God never intended for his people to stay in captivity. And Isaiah's message was a message of peace and hope in a world of war and despair. And I'm glad tonight, child of God, you and I can have peace and hope in this world that we're going through tonight. In the year 1939, the beginning of World War II, the British government, they produced a motivational poster. That poster was intended to raise the morale of the British public, which were threatened with widely predicted mass air attacks on major cities in Great Britain. Two and a half million copies were printed, and although the mass air attacks known as the Blitz did take place, the poster was only rarely publicly displayed and was little known until a copy was rediscovered in the year 2000 in, local, in a local bookstore. That poster simply read these words, keep calm and carry on. And I believe tonight that's the message that Isaiah was portraying to God's people. He was just telling them to keep calm and carry on. You understand, fear not was his exact message. And there's one word that really stuck out to me as I read this verse, and it's that word dismayed. Uh, Isaiah said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. That word dismayed means to deprive of that strength or firmness of mind which constitutes a courage, or it means to panic. And God did not want his people to dismay. He did not want his people to panic. He, he wanted them to be reminded that he was still with them, although he seemed distant. He was still their God, although they seemed like they were all alone. He was still their strength and their help, although they felt like they were weak and helpless. Can I say tonight, my friend, the world around them changed, but thank God, God did not change. Amen. 
And his message to them was, keep calm and carry on. It's amazing across our country tonight, and I understand it's going on around the world, but across the country, our world and our lives have changed in just a few months. And as a whole, it has proved how spoiled and self-dependent we are as a nation and as a people. And child of God, can we be reminded, God hadn't just been good to us in America. God has flat spoiled us rotten, amen. And it seems like some of God's people have become a faithless people. I've gotten to that place where I was driven by fear instead of faith. And can I tell you, I'm not belittling what's going on in our country. But the word panic means a sudden fright, particularly a sudden fright without real cause or terror inspired by a trifling cause or misapprehension of danger. And the Bible still says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I'm not making light of the pandemic that has been declared on our nation, but I am addressing the unnecessary state of panic that people are in, especially God's people. Let the world panic and lose their mind, but let God's people just keep calm and carry on. Can we be reminded the Christian has something very different inside of us that the world does not have? Thank Thank God we have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of us. And another name for the Holy Spirit, his name is Comforter, amen. And he'll comfort us through the storms of life. Amen. And for the next few minutes, I want to give us five reasons. From right here at one verse, Isaiah 41, verse number 10. On five reasons why you and I can keep calm and carry on. Look at it with me tonight. Look what the Bible says. Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10, if you're there, say amen. Look what it says. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Can I say reason number one, you and I can keep calm and carry on because God is a present God, amen. He's a present God. He said, for I am with thee. He also told us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse number five, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Mine and my wife's, the dynamics of our ministry has changed and she doesn't travel with me as much as she once did. We traveled a million five hundred thousand miles together across this country and I'm thankful she travels with me in the summer, but you understand, uh, on Saturday she dropped me off at the Lexington, uh, Kentucky airport and I left my wife there in Kentucky and I came to El Dorado, Arkansas. But Brother Bob, I left her there but I did not forsake her, amen. But can I tell you, I serve a God in heaven. The Bible says he doesn't do either one. I'm glad he hasn't left me. I'm glad that he has not forsaken me, amen. He's with me tonight. He's with you tonight, church. Can I say he was with Adam and Eve in the garden? He was with Moses through the wilderness wanderings. He was with Joseph while he was in the pit, the prison, and the palace. He was with Elijah in the cave and on the mountain. He was with David as he slew Goliath. He was with Daniel in the lion's den. He was with his people in Babylonian captivity. He was with Paul in prison. Can I say, listen to me tonight, folks. We don't have to wait for God to show up or send somebody to go get him. He's omnipresent, amen. He's with our missionaries across the globe as well as he's with us tonight. I'm glad he's not only here in El Dorado, Arkansas, but I'll find him in Lacey, Kentucky tomorrow. I'll find him, I'll find him wherever. I'm going to be next week. Thank God tonight, my friend. He is a present God. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, verse number 2, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. He assured his people back in Isaiah's day that when they passed through the water, the rivers of the fire, Everything was going to be all right because he was with them. And the Bible says in Psalm 118, verse number 6, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? And I understand tonight, maybe the pandemic in your mind is the furthest thing from your mind, but I understand maybe somebody on the side of my voice, you came to the house of God tonight with the Bible tucked under your arm and a smile on your face, but when you leave this place, you're facing a real deep, dark valley. You're going through a storm of life, but can I tell you, my friend, you're not going through that valley by yourself. You're not going through that storm by yourself. 
have. Thank God he's present with you going through that storm. Amen. Can I say first of all tonight, I'll tell you why we can keep calm and carry on not belittling the situations you go through. Can I tell you he's still on the throne. Amen. And I can keep calm and carry on because he is a present God. Look at Isaiah 41 verse number 10. The Bible says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. He's a present God. Be not dismayed. Look what it says. For I am thy God. Brother Bob, I can keep calm and carry on, not only because he's a present God, but number two, Miss Peggy, I can keep calm and carry on. Yes, somebody said it. He's a personal God. Amen. He said, I am thy God. That phrase, my God, that's used 148 times throughout the Bible. And God wanted to let his people know that he was not just the God of Abraham. He's not just the God of Isaac. He's not just the God of Jacob. He's not just the God of Moses and Elijah. He's not just the God of David and Solomon. He was a personal God to each and every one of them. He's a personal God to each and every one of us. I I'm glad when we go through the hardest things of our life, I'm glad he's personal. I'm glad sometimes it seems as if we can't carry any more. And it seems like he reaches out of heaven with those nail scarred hands and wraps us up and just says, I will let you know I love you and I'm your God tonight and I will to get you through this storm you're going through. I'm glad tonight. My friend, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 14 through 16, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be tempted with or touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. And I'm glad when we have that time of need where we need God's grace, he says, I'm personal, God, and you can come to me just like you go to your earthly mom or you go to your earthly father. He said, you can come boldly to me. Number three, fear thou not, for I am with thee. He's a present God. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. He's a personal God. I will strengthen thee. You know why we can keep calm and carry on? Because he's a powerful God. Can I be very plain this evening? You say, well, you've been plain all week, Brother Dallas. You might as well go ahead and keep on doing that. Amen. Can I say our God is not some weak, anemic old man sitting up in heaven wringing his hands worried about what's going on down here on earth. David said it best in 2 Samuel 22, 33. God is my strength and my power, and he maketh my way perfect. Child of God, God is the very definition of power. There's nobody like God. He's omnipotent, which means containing all power. It means supreme authority. Can we be reminded, it is God's power that allows mankind to breathe. It's God's power that spins the earth on her axis. It's God's power that causes the sun to rise in the east and set in the west. It's God's power that holds the stars in the sky. It was God's power that parted the Red Sea. It was God's power that made the fire to fall on Mount Carmel. It was God's power that shut the mouth of the lions. It was God's power that fell on the day of Pentecost. It was God's power that turned a murderer named Saul into a missionary named Paul. It's, a, it's God's power through his word that takes a cold, hard heart and softens it into multiple clay. Thank God tonight I don't serve a dead Christ on a cross. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. And child of God, he is a powerful God tonight. And don't ever forget this, the most supernatural prayer that God ever answered in any of our lives was the day that we called upon His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to save our soul. And the same great big God of heaven that answered that supernatural prayer of faith is the same great big God of heaven that can calm the storms of our life. Number four, very quickly. Look at Isaiah 41, verse number 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. He's a present God. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. He's a personal God. 
I will strengthen thee. He's a powerful God. Yea, I will help thee. He's a protecting God. I can keep calm and carry on because he's a protecting God. Although we cannot see God, rest assured, he sees us tonight. The Bible says in Lamentations 3, verse number 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. We're not consumed or destroyed because of the very protection of God. The Bible says in Psalm 61, verse number 3, For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I was in Kansas a couple of weeks ago. and There in Kansas they have cold winters, and not only cold winters, but they also have uh, pretty bad storms in Kansas, the tornadoes and things. And so most of the homes there they have, they have a, a basement, or they call them a storm shelter. And when those tornadoes come, they go down to the storm shelter. You understand that storm shelter does not prevent the storm from coming. It just protects them once the storm does come. And child of God, the storms will come, but I'm glad he's my protection, even though I go through the storms of life. He's got us. He's never lost anyone yet. He's never let one slip through his fingers. And I'm glad that we can keep calm and carry on because God is our protection. Amen. Keep calm and carry on. Why? Because he's a present God. He's a personal God. He's a powerful God. He's a protecting God. Look what it says in verse number 10. Look at the latter part. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Brother Matt, I can keep calm and carry on because God is my preservation. God's very nature is to preserve, to help, to sustain his children. In other words, he supports us. He holds us up. And just as Aaron and her upheld and supported Moses' arms as they fought the enemy, God is holding up the arms of his children in this world of war. The Bible says in Job 4, 4, thy words have upholden him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble needs. There's nothing in this universe that will help you and I like this book. Thank God tonight, this book is quick, it's alive, it's powerful, and the same Bible that had power to bring conviction upon our soul to save us by the grace of God is the same Bible that has power to calm the storms of our life. Thank God he is a preserving God. Amen. And he preserves us through the storms of life. Child of God, many in this world, they're falling in their sin. Their knees are weak and feeble. But I'm glad his word will sustain us and will prop us up. Amen. not saying that I wasn't fearful, but I'm glad it didn't last very long, amen. I'm glad, I'm glad like Job said, I believe it was, the Almighty troubleth me. And I'm glad in that motel room in Roanoke Springs, North Carolina, the Holy Ghost of God brought conviction upon my heart and said, turn the stupid television set off, get my book, and I'll let you keep calm and just carry on, amen. And child of God, you can keep calm and carry on. I reminded of a story that I heard some time ago. Miss Reed, if you're playing the pen and I, you can go ahead and make your way, please, ma'am. It's a little country town. Just really had one red light in the town and one Baptist church, and the doctor was a member of that little Baptist church there and just one little doctor's office in the town. And the doctor's best friend was a member of that church with him, and they had been Christians for many years and been saved for many years. But his best friend, the doctor's best friend, was now terminally ill, and it was very evident he was knocking on death's door. He wasn't, he wasn't expected to live very much longer. And he was just in the doctor's office one day as, for a routine checkup and he began to fight the tears back and he was trying to get the professional opinion of his doctor but he was also trying to find some comforting words from his dearest friend on earth. 
And the patient asked the doctor, he said, doctor, he said, or he told the doctor, he said, I know I'm saved. He said, I know heaven's my home. He said, I know I'm going there when I die. He said, but I'm just a little bit fearful of the unknown. I, I'm fearful if I'm going to die in the middle, of my, the middle of the night while I'm sleeping. I'm fearful of how it's going to happen. He said, I'm just a little bit fearful of the unknown. And the doctor was still trying to be professional and, as a doctor, but he was fighting the tears back, Miss Debbie, because of that being his dearest friend knocking on death's door. And the doctor was trying to find the answers to be able to comfort not only his patient but his friend. And all of a sudden, the doctor's door just come swinging wide open as fast as it could. And it was the doctor's dog. And the doctor looked at that dog and he said, you know, he said, I believe as a Christian when we die or when we're fearful of the unknown, it's kind of like that dog that came busting up in this office here. That dog, that dog didn't have a clue what was on the other side of the door. The only thing he knew was that his master was there. And could I say tonight many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know it's in his hand, amen. I know I quoted that wrong, but you know what I meant, amen. Let's stand tonight. If anything, child of God, why don't we just meet at the altar and just thank the Lord for who he is tonight. Let's just thank the Lord that He's a present God. Let's thank the Lord He's a personal God. Let's thank the Lord that He's a protecting and a powerful God and a preserving God. And maybe, just maybe, this Wednesday night revival service, there's somebody on the sound of my voice with our heads bowed or eyes closed. You don't know this God that I'm talking about. You don't know His darling Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you've heard about Jesus. You've heard the things that we've talked about tonight and throughout this week, but you don't know them personally. You came to the service tonight like Gavin came last night through those doors. You've heard about Jesus in your mind, but you've never trusted him in your heart. And last night, right where Gavin's sitting, the Holy Spirit of God brought conviction upon his heart. He was able to hear the gospel message, and now Gavin didn't leave last night like he came in. Maybe that's you tonight. You don't know Christ is your Savior. You don't know heaven is your home. I wonder who would say, Brother Dallas, would you please pray for me? I don't have the assurance tonight that others do in this building that if I were to die, if heaven would be my home, but I sure would like to have that assurance. Would you please pray for me? Brother Dallas, I do not know heaven is my home. I do not know if I were to die if I would go to heaven, would you please pray for me? If that's your testimony, I wonder if you just slip up your hand good and high. Brother Dallas, I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure heaven to be my home. Would you please pray for me? Would you please pray for me? I'm going to ask Brother Weedo to come and in the services he sees fit tonight. Thank you, Brother Weedo. The instruments are playing softly tonight. If you need to come, join these here at the altar. <clears throat> Wilt thou not revive us again? Us. That's you and that's me again. That's why we have revivals ever so often, because we need to be revived again. The song says, revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. You know, we don't mean for it to happen, but it happens to the best of us. We kind of get away sometimes and we cool off. We do, we cool off. And man, that's why we need revival. That's why we need revival. And Christ loved the church and he gave himself for it. And we are the church. The church is not the buildings, it's not the properties. No, the church is us. A called out assembly of born again baptized believers. We are the church. And Christ loves us tonight and gave himself for us. Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Man, what a blessing to be a blessing to others. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dallas. That was a great message. It's good stuff. I'm very, very thankful tonight that Gavin got saved last night. And uh, it's a blessing. Amen. Gavin, hold your hand up back there. It's Gavin back there. And Gavin's 20 years old. And uh, I'm so glad he walked down the aisle last night. And, he got saved, and Brother Bob led him to the Lord as a blessing. But yesterday was 48 years ago to the day that Brother Bob got saved. And on his 48th 
anniversary of being saved, he got to lead Gavin to the Lord. Isn't that a blessing? I was thinking, wow, that's unbelievable. We couldn't, have, we couldn't have stayed up late and figured that out or planned that out, but what a blessing for Brother Bob on his, the day he got saved 48 years later to be able to take the Bible and lead somebody to the Lord. It's good, isn't it? It's like getting saved all over again when you open your Bible and take somebody through the plan of salvation and, and show them how to get to heaven, amen? And, uh, man, it was good. It's good. It's been a great week. Um, we've got everything kind of tallied up, and we're going to write Brother J Dallas's love offering check tonight. And so if you've got some monies to put in, maybe you haven't had a part this week or you want to do something else, uh, let's get that on in so we can kind of get that taken care of, okay? We're just going to go ahead and get that taken care of. And, and really, honestly, we're going to have a real good love offering for him, okay? And, and uh, we'll, we'll let you know what it all comes out to be, but uh, it's going to be a great love offering for him. be a great week for his, his life and Brother Freddie's life too, man. Brother Freddie's very appreciative. And I know some of you really sacrificed this week, really dug deep, and I appreciate that very much. And, you know, we don't have a revival every, every week. We, I mean, you know what I'm saying, as far as bringing in outside speakers and all of that. So we kind of prepare and try to take really good care of, um, of our evangelists and people when they come into our church. And we believe that very strongly in doing double honor, you know, to God's men. So, you know, we try to make up for the churches where they maybe don't know how to take care of them properly. You know, we try to give them as much as we possibly can. You know what I'm talking about because kind of make up for slack weeks when maybe, you know, they just didn't get, get what they needed to meet their needs. So we want to be one of the churches that, you know, gives them a good a good uh, love offering. So anyway, thank you all for being here tonight. We love you. In the Lord, Brother Dallas, you can head back that way. And Brother Ben, you come up and dismiss us tonight. And, and uh, today, uh, Brother Dallas, after we got done with chapel, we, we came into my office and we... Um, by the way, you might want to tune in Sunday morning on the radio program. Um, I interviewed him on the radio program. It's a good radio program, and, and uh, that usually comes on around 9 o'clock in the morning. And um, I don't even know what channel. What channel is that, Miss Peggy? Do you know what the name of the channel is? It's Nolmark Broadcasting. And uh, anyway, I'm not exactly sure what channel it is, but um, it used to be KLBQ, KDMS, and then they got bought out by somebody else. So. What is it, Brother Josh? You know the number on it, or what? 103.3. Okay, yeah, 103.3. Yeah. Okay. So if you can tune in on that, it'd be be a blessing. But um, anyway, Brother Dallas came to my office today, and we we booked him back for next year. Isn't that good? And uh, yeah, we booked him back for next year. Next year's the year we have the Revival Fires Conference. So Brother Dennis Corr will be coming in for Monday, Tuesday. But Brother Dallas will be here preaching at our Christian school and preaching at the church and all that. Brother Dallas? Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. That's good, isn't it? That's good stuff. That's good stuff. And uh, appreciate Brother Dallas investing his life in others, trying to help them. Amen. And we've all heard his testimony. And, and there was a day in his life when he needed help, and now he's helping others. And that's the way it works. So, all right, Brother Ben, you come. Dismiss some prayer, please. Lord, thank you for the message that we've heard tonight, dear Lord. Uh, thank you for Brother Dallas. Uh, being willing to travel, dear Lord, and to preach your word, dear Lord. And I just pray that you would bless him in a special way. I pray that you would uh, give him power, dear Lord, as he travels around uh, the country, dear Lord, and preaches. I just pray that you would lift him up, strengthen him, and bless him. Give him a special blessing, dear Lord. I just pray that you would uh, help us, dear Lord, to remember, dear Lord, your power, dear Lord, and that you got us, dear Lord, and that you... Uh, you're taking care of us and that you're watching out for us. I just pray that you would help us to live for you, dear Lord, to show our appreciation for all that you've done for us, dear Lord. I pray that you'd help us to be a witness. Dear Lord, go with us this week. We love you. We thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.